I think creativity is really one's ability to sort of take the everyday, the things that we're used to. Um, I mean, it might sound quite obvious, but most artists are working with an assumption that people have an in. They understand certain things about what they're playing with and they're shifting them. Sometimes they're shifting them dramatically outside of the everyday and sometimes there's a very subtle shift. So I grew up in Miami, uh, not in the area that many people know, not in kind of the beach. Um, so more uh, further south and more towards the, the kind of nature, right? Um, there's a giant swamp in Florida called the Everglades, which um, is basically the entire lower half of the state. And um, spent a lot of time out there the whole city there is kind of uh, fabricated out of the swamp. Florida is known for these hurricanes, and in 1992, there was a very bad storm um, that completely uh, destroyed the house that we were living in. And it was a fascinating um, experience for me, terrifying, but fascinating, in seeing this um, you know, architecture is often constructed in a way for us to feel safe. It has a solidity about it. It shouldn't be moving, right? When architecture is moving, it's a hurricane or an earthquake. Um, and following the storm, it was the first time that I was able to see inside of the architecture, right? Um, all these things behind the walls and the way that the uh, house was actually constructed. So the house was destroyed and then it was reconstructed back to its original state, almost identically to the original, um, which was also a kind of productive and strange experience. Most children take art classes and music and things like that. And there was a, a teacher that had told my parents, you know, this is something that I think would be good for him to focus on. And I received a camera as a gift for my, one of my birthdays when I was young um, from my grandfather. And that was something that just was this amazing object. It was a Pentax K1000. And I just loved everything about that object. The mechanics of it, the ability to kind of capture this moment. I was accepted at a school here in New York called uh, Cooper Union, which is focused in architecture and engineering. So it has a big kind of conceptual focus around the idea that an artist doesn't necessarily need to focus in a particular medium, right? So I studied painting and sculpture and film, primarily focused actually in painting. So a lot of the earlier works that I was making were these kind of um, these landscapes, uh, kind of fictional architectural landscapes, um, where the architecture was in kind of a state between something that looked like it was being built and something that looked like it was kind of falling apart. I mean, so much of the work that I've made has this notion of something floating in time. There was never people in the paintings um, because I always felt that it would kind of lock them into a particular moment in time. Somebody dressed like I am now, they're not from 150 years ago. So that notion of something or an image, when you look at it, it could be from now, could be from the future or the past, I felt was kind of an interesting place. And this sculpture has even an even more evocative way of doing that because Many of the objects I'm casting are things people may have owned, they recognize from their own life, and there can be something quite problematic for a viewer to see something that, you know, is from now, but it looks like an antiquity that you might find in a museum, and that confusion, I think, is just an interesting place. It's often the case that with certain pieces, I cannot trace, like, the origin because one idea has led to the next so many times that finding the original kind of concept and, and um, desire for that work to come into existence is difficult, but there's a, a lot of process and failure within the practice of the studio, and there are things that I might kind of go down a road and 
never reaches a kind of point that I'm willing to bring that into an exhibition, but it stays around in the studio and five years later, that thing comes back into the fold. There's a number of different series that I've developed, you know, over the last 15 years that begin as a kind of a spark of an idea and evolve. And many of them are kind of still in a state of development. And I don't know whether I've kind of found their end purpose in a way. The idea of the architectural manipulation, the idea of uh, a kind of fictional archaeology, so something that we would know and find in our present day, like a camera that has been kind of projected into the future, uh, almost like a, an archaeological object. And its, it, its story is told through the transformation of the material. So an object that was once metal and glass is now made in volcanic ash or in crystal or in, you know, reformed itself in, in bronze and has a kind of aged patina about it. So in that way, the kind of materiality of the objects have a kind of high importance within the studio and sometimes they tell us as much about the work and about the kind of concept as the visual uh, kind of quality of it as well. So when I first began casting these objects, these kind of fictional archaeological objects, I wanted something that not only would kind of link it to this particular moment in time, but also if I showed it in New York or Tokyo or Brazil, it would kind of mean the same thing. And so these kind of everyday cultural objects, sneakers and cameras and radios and things that, um, they're kind of ubiquitous, like global language in a way that really in, in the simplest way, like mean now. Um, so their use is um, helpful in that way. A lot of the objects that I make have materials that we associate with different kind of levels of value, semi-precious crystal and stones and things like that. The idea of something being kind of provocative, not in a controversial way, but something that can cause you to think differently about your everyday experience or your um, approach to, um, to certain things, maybe that's like a kind of beauty in a way. I mean, the element of failure and fear certainly is in, you know, all of the works and all of the exhibitions. The project that I did with Merce Cunningham, the first one, was, you know, I was 24 when I met him and I had never been on a stage before, I had never worked in that field. And it's one of these projects that I just was up late, you know, every night, um, kind of terrified at what we were executing. and. Um, just had a lot of complexities that I wasn't quite used to, but each new thing is kind of, kind of like an interesting challenge. And um, these things become regular, right, within the practice. And the idea of failure, I mean, in some ways, it's like inherent in all of the work, this idea of collapse and break and kind of error. But I also think, you know, each exhibition and, and project in some ways has its own failures uh, about it. If it was completely successful, then what would be the purpose to make more work and continue to iterate um, these ideas. The more difficult projects stand out to me. The project Rules of the Game with Pharrell and Jonah and the um, symphony was just a complex thing to pull off. All the work that I've done in film and some of the more recent uh, large-scale exhibitions. This exhibition in, in China at the Howe Museum in Shanghai has uh, one part of it has a full-scale functioning archaeological excavation within the museum and that's just a huge endeavor. I think being able to work in these areas that are fascinating for me and um, that I have a kind of obsession about feels so um, fulfilling and, and satisfying. And then obviously trying to get this kind of like work-life balance because when I'm here, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm working in a sense. It's just the same as, as doing anything else that I love. <laughs>